Right now we're climbing up all the way to the top of the tank. Okay, so we'll come and check out how you, what are we going to see right now? We're going to see how we, how we bottle. We're going down to the uh, winery portion of the building where we have the bottling process actively ongoing right now. Okay. I've never been down here. This really? is very cool. Oh, wow, look at that. All just these kegs down here, barrels. Barrel room where we have our French, primarily French oak barrels that are used for aging and storing our bitter wines. So, what's happening here? This is actually sparkling wine that is being put into temporary. Uh, using temporary bottle caps so that the fermentation can occur in the bottle over the next couple of years. They're not using corks in this process. These bottles are not finished. The process of making a sparkling wine involves taking still wine, adding it into the bottle together with additional yeast and a dosage of sugar and having it ferment in the bottle. And then when it's time to remove the yeast, then they will put the corks in. This is amazing. Using a great amount of skill and a great amount of effort, the process of creating just a single line of sparkling wine at Wolfer Estate Vineyards is extremely complex, but there is no other man in the world that knows this process better than Ro Roman Roth, who is the head winemaker at Wolfer Estate Vineyards and is responsible for every single bottle of award-winning wine. Just describe what you're, in terms of your, in terms of your job, what it was you were doing before. Well, today is an exciting day. We are bottling our sparkling wine, the 2009 vintage. And this is basically the first step to become a sparkling wine. It was a still wine. The first fermentation has finished in tanks. Mm -hmm. And today we are putting it into bottles. Just before bottling, we added uh, sugar and yeast. And now we are putting it into a sealed container, basically a bottle with a crown cap. And the yeast ferments the sugar and the CO2, the gas that is that gets created during the fermentation process cannot escape so it slowly gets integrated into the wine and that's what gives the bubbles that's what gives the fine mousse that's what makes a great champagne or in this case a great sparkling wine so this is how the yeast stays there after three years and then once a year we shake up all this yeast so it goes back into suspension right and releases its nutty flavors and its little orange peel and all the classical sparkling wine or champagne characters that make a, a, our wine very special. Right. So we shake it up. So all 12, 13,000 bottles get shaken up. Wow. <laughs> and then finally, as we go into these riddling racks, we start very flat, as flat as these racks allow. Right. And every day we turn an eight. And we slowly... All by hand. All by hand. And wow. we slowly erect. This is only a, a, a tenth of what of the racks we have. Actually, with our most of the racks are in a different building. So... Then we slowly erect the bottle so that all this yeast slowly glides into the neck. And then at the end you have all the yeast down here. Mm -hmm. It's called aging it to a point. You can keep it like this for another half a year or sometimes two years. Mm -hmm. And at that stage finally you put it in a glycol bath in order to freeze this yeast, make a little ice cube. So once it's frozen you finally can turn the, the bottle upside down so in the right way. So, you, you want me to smell in here? Yeah, you can. What? We have All already right. like fermentation gas. Oh yeah, can definitely smell the gas. Try to make sure we still have enough wine. Uh, you know that the, the filler has enough wine all the time. And when this tank is finished, we jump on to the next where we just added the yeast. really getting an amazing it's just amazing how much is involved with making wine this is a real work of art the uh, fine wood table 
we call the half moon table. And of course, we have a Bacchus looking over the, uh, the scene. So this is where we have our Bacchanalian feasts. Your Bacchanalian feasts? I gotta come down for one of those. This is the uh, guarded entrance to the wine library. Not only do we have a uh, ornate uh, gate, but we also have a plexiglass shield to keep it at a constant temperature. And do you have any books in there? No good books, but a lot of great wines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were just saying about the barrels are mostly... Mo most of these are French oak barrels. Right. And we here at Wolfie use primarily French oak barrels because they provide a softer finish. David was kind enough to show me some signature barrels that they have signed by famous celebrities. Everybody from Billy Joel to Bill Murray has uh, signed one of these barrels. You're dying to tell me about something here. What yeah, is this? This is our high tech security system. This little fellow really, really enjoys his wine and guards it. Uh, <laughs> and if anyone disturbs it, he gets very excited. Wolfer State is known for throwing all kinds of events from weddings to corporate events to um, Friday night jazz they have, that they have at night to during the day in the Hamptons in the summertime you can come down here yourself and, and or year round you can enjoy uh, all the fine wines that they make on site right here. It's really, really, really something. What are you going to have any tra uh, our taste top here? Of the line Chardonnay, what we call Pearl, it has the new white horse label, and Pearl is one of the champion horses. Mm -hmm. This Chardonnay is 70% fermented in French oak barrels. That gives it a lot more color. All right. Uh, I'll, let me, I'll give it a try here. If you could just hold the camera. Sure. Taste it here. All right. I don't, I don't think I've ever had anything that tastes like that. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's really different. Yeah, because of the barrel fermentation process. That's a wine that's been served at the White House by both Democrats and Republicans, the head, heads of state. And uh, it's a really good dinner wine.